everybody, welcome back to Betty. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. And I have a dear friend of mine here with me, Josh, and he's going to talk to us about that dreaded word, retirement. You know, we can't work forever, even though I seem to think that we can, but sooner or later, we all got to sit back and relax and enjoy life, right? That's what we have to prepare for. So, Josh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself before we start talking about this dreaded word, retirement? Oh, it's not a dreaded word. It's a beautiful, uh, wonderful word. I can't imagine not working. I think it's better to think of it as not having to work. Okay. <laughs> we love to work. So, I'm Josh Siegel. I, I, um, I lead a Dave Ramsey financial peace class. Uh-huh. Uh, me and my wife are well on our way to retirement. I hope to retire when I'm 54. Whew. Wow. And, uh, and we're well on our, on our path there. So Dave Ramsey, tell us a little bit about him. I know you were here a few months ago and you talked about some seven steps. Who is Dave Ramsey? Dave Ramsey is an evangelical Christian that uh -huh. um, decided that he never didn't want to live day to day anymore. Didn't want to live paycheck to paycheck anymore. Mm -hmm. Didn't want um, to be in debt anymore. Um, Dave Ramsey actually... Um, thought he had it all together. He had a very large real estate business. Um, uh -huh. And he was a mil millionaire, multi-millionaire. Um, and then what happened is the bank called all his loans at the same time. Ooh. So all this real estate he had, um, they wanted him to pay all the loans back all at once. Wow. So he was forced to bankruptcy. And that put a bad taste in his mouth, as it should. Anybody that's filed bankruptcy uh, can attest yeah. to that. Um, and so he is anti-debt he doesn't like debt. that's bad debt is evil to him mm -hmm. um, it's not sinful you know in his mind uh, but he does talk a lot about how the Bible warns against debt that debt is dumb it says it in the Bible I think well, it says it exactly that so <laughs> so um, so he's obviously uh, went through this he learned from the Bible um, what how God wants us to handle money and mm -hmm. so um, he teaches that and you know we we're living paycheck to paycheck, and I didn't feel, I felt like, you know, every time we made some headway, we s took two steps back, and uh -huh. we were in more debt, and we had less cash, and uh, we just made a decision one day that we're going to, we're going to do this program, and we did it, and we were, we are out of debt, you know, we paid off $27,500 wow. in debt, and uh, in two years, uh -huh. and on my one income, my wife doesn't work, um, Whoa. and yeah. So it works. It works. The stuff works. So tell me, retirement. Why well, is it so important to be out of debt when you retire? So Dave Ramsey Baby Steps is, as I talked about before, uh -huh. is one is a thousand dollars, two is is the debt snowball, um, and what that does is that frees up a lot of cash. Mm -hmm. Because what we want to do is we want to save fifteen percent of our take our of our income and put it towards retirement. That's a lot of money. It seems like a lot of money, <laughs> but when you're out of debt, so for us, um, that $27,500 in debt equaled almost $1,000 a month uh -huh. is what we're making in payments. Now, $1,000 a month after your debt's paid off is disposable, so I can use that $1,000 towards saving for my retirement. Oh, okay, so it's not so bad then. It's not so bad anymore. Okay, so it can be done. That's right. What would you say are some of the challenges many people have facing retirement today? Well, I think first and foremost is people don't have a plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think that um, a lot of people don't know what to do. I think that the words seem real big and it seems real complicated, uh -huh. and they are you know they just don't know how to handle it. Uh -huh. um, I think some people don't feel like they have the money or the cash to put towards retirement, uh -huh. um, but ultimately it all comes down to a plan and sometimes you just got to open the book and look at it and it becomes a lot easier. So. Look at it and follow it, right? That's right. So why are people having so much trouble saving money for retirement? Or saving money, period? Well, I would hazard to say it's probably because of debt uh -huh. and the fact that they're not making budgets every month. Um, because when it comes down to it, the discipline that comes from a, bu a budget produces results. Uh-huh. Um, uh, I think the Bible says no discipline looks good at the time, but it reaps great reward. Mm -hmm. So um, the discipline, you got to discipline. You got to do a budget. You got to do it every month. You got to know where your money's going. You got to tell your money what to do so that you can get to a point that you can tell your money 
what to do in your retirement mm -hmm. and invest. Mm -hmm. and this is how wealthy people get wealthy. It's long, you know, they tell the story of the tortoise and hare, and you know, Dave talks about that, and he asked a very, very wealthy billionaire, how do I get there? How, you know, what's the secret sauce? And he says, you know, have you ever read the book Tortoise and Hare? He's like, he's- Who has it? So it's, it's just small steps over time build wealth. And we live in a world huh. full of hares. Everybody's running here, running there, running here, running there. But if you really sit down with wealthy people, the majority of them have just taken small steps over time and had discipline. Uh-huh. Huh. So step four, baby step four is saving for retirement, right? That's correct. If I remember correctly. And how much are you supposed to put back while you're working? 15%. That's a lot of money. And on that, let's take a short break while I digest that. Okay? Okay. <laughs> When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. So you can't save money? That's easy as pie. Brown bag and lunch instead of going out. $6 save times 5 days a week times 10 years is 21,000 bucks. That's a lot of lettuce. Small changes today, big bucks tomorrow. Feedthepig.org. Oh, oh, all in together now. We can make it better now. Come on, can we do it? We know that we can. We roll it up. Because we know how to jump. We roll it out. Roll it out. we know how to skate. We'll cut it down. We'll cut it down. we know what to eat. We'll swap it out. Just moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Search We Can to find doable tips and activities that you can use every day. Hi, and welcome back to Betty. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. I'm here with Josh, and we're talking about retirement. Yes. He says it's a good word, but I'm afraid to face that word, but it is coming to all of us one day. So before we went on break, we talked about the fourth baby step, which is saving 15% for retirement. Yes. I think that's a lot, but you say, but it can be done. Yeah, it can be done easily. Easily. You know, you, a lot of people will be like, well, do I have to do all 15%? Well, do you want to be very wealthy and be able to give and be able to live uh -huh. well? Or do you, you know, you got to make it a priority. And it's got to be a priority. This is true. And it's got, you got to start as soon as you can. So mm -hmm. get through baby steps one, two, and three. I think we mentioned three. Uh, three is, in this show, is three is three to six months of um, expenses. So whatever your expenses are. So we get one, two, and three, we get to baby step four, 15% uh -huh. of your retirement, you have extra income now from not having um, any debt. So, You know, I'm sitting here thinking about a question that's not even re related to retirement, but you said that Dave Ramsey, he used a lot of the principles from the Bible mm -hmm. as a part of getting out of debt. Does he mention tithing, tithing at all? Yes, it's your any first. Step? Give, giving is, giving is not a step in the baby steps. Insurance ah. is not a step in the baby steps. It's a part of your budget. Uh huh. And giving should always be at top. Saving should always be at top of your budget. Giving okay. and saving, because a lot of people are like, man, I get through all this stuff and I got no money left. Yeah. And he says, well, you got the budget upside down. Flip it over. You uh -huh. start with giving. You start with saving. Ah. And then you make your budget. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I had that straight before we got any further on our conversation about retirement. So, where should people put their monies if they want to start a retirement fund? So, uh, Dave talks about a lot of different things, and you hear a lot of words go around like 401k, 457s, yes. uh, mutual funds, um, uh, a number of words, and it all gets really kind of confusing. But and they do. It's, it's really not that confusing. So 401k, mm. what everybody's is like, I put my money in a 401k. Well, you didn't put your money in a 401k. You put your money and in invest in an investment, and you had this blanket of 401k. 401k is the tax code. For it's actually oh. literally section 401 or line 401 section K in the You're tax kidding. code. That is what 401k. 457 is section 457 and the tax code. 
So it's not that complicated. It just means how the money is being taxed. Uh -huh. But you're actually putting your money in investments uh, or mutual funds or single stocks or things like that. So the 401k and 457 is really a mutual fund? It could be. It could be anything. Because that's, uh -huh. just, that's just the blanket. That's to keep the government off of your money, oh. right? <laughs> so, so the 401k is the blanket. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so that's just the tax code. So I, if I put in a 401k, it means they can't take the taxes out yet. If I oh, put in a okay. 457, they can't take the taxes out. Uh -huh. Like 457 is specific to government employees um, and, and 403Bs. 43As is specific to teachers and stuff like that. Uh -huh, but it's uh -huh. just the tax code to keep the government from taking oh. taxes from that money. Um, and so you have IRA, a Roth IRA, that's all just tax code. Okay. So, so it's not that complicated, <laughs> it's just taxes. That's okay. what it means. So you didn't really invest your money. So what you're investing in, and what Dave talks about, is mutual funds. Uh -huh. And so you want to invest money in mutual funds. And mutual funds sounds like a big word. Yeah, that what people talk is that? about let's diversify and what's diversify. Uh -huh. So so diversification means you just don't put your all your money in one pot. You don't uh -huh. want to take all your money and put it in your company stock. Because now you've not only staked your income on your company, you've staked your retirement on your company and all your investment on your company. If that company goes under, you're up a creek. Yeah, you have no trouble. job and you have no retirement. Mm. So so single stocks are super high risk. You don't want to uh -huh. invest in single stocks uh, unless it's just kind of like play money after you've done all this other stuff. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so you want something that is diversified. Now you can divert now a mutual fund is a fund where it's you put your money in. Okay. I put my money in. This person puts their money in. It's mutually funded. That's where the term oh. mutual fund comes from. So a lot of people put it into this fund. Now this fund could be, um, for example, um, a growth growth stock mutual fund. So you could have stocks that are growing in value uh -huh. from several companies. So say we put we have Walmart in our mutual our growth stock mutual fund. Say we have Lowe's in our gross stock mutual fund. Say we have um, Disney. Pfizer or Disney. So we're f it's this it's this group of companies uh -huh. that we are all mutually funding, and some of them might go up, some of them might go down. Uh -huh. uh, we, hopefully they all keep going in this trajectory. Uh -huh. But then our money is diversified. So let's say Lowe's were to go out of business, we might make a loss on that one, but it might shoot Walmart way up high. So Walmart might go oh. way up high. And so, and so all a mutual fund is, is people mutually putting their money in to some investment. So not that hard. And diversification will come through putting your money in different things. You know, I didn't know that's what it was <laughs> <laughs> all this time. <laughs> you made it sound so simple. Oh my God. So <laughs> I cannot believe that. That's all that, well, that's what that is. So how do you choose a mutual fund or how do you find one that works for you? Or do you have to like, if I didn't like Walmart, do I have to put my money in a mutual fund that has Walmart in it? Can you pick and choose no, the companies? There's thousands of mutual funds. And okay. the best advice I can give is find a broker that you trust. Uh -huh. Now remember, you're hiring this person. You'd be hiring this person to manage your money. You want to find somebody that's reputable. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You want to, I mean, do an interview on the person. If you're going to hire somebody for a job, you'd hire them. Mm -hmm, you, would, mm -hmm. you would interview them first and you'd find the best candidate. So um, find somebody that's not really high in fees and not trading your money around and they can show you how and where all the mutual funds are and who they are. Don't invest in things you don't understand. That's probably the worst mistake everybody makes uh -huh. is they invest in things they don't understand and don't invest in anything you can't control. Um, what so, do you mean by that? So a lot of a lot of investments, especially through work, you'll find that you have to invest uh, in some type of plan mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that somebody else picks for you. So whenever you can invest in things that you have control over. So if I want to move this money, I can move it. Uh huh. Uh, so you're not stuck in something. And also, again, don't huh. don't invest in things you don't understand. Make sure you understand the things that you're investing in, uh -huh. uh, because because you're in control of your money. If you let somebody else run around with it and manage it, you may, and you'll never know what's going on with it, then you'll maybe up a creek one day. That's so true. So what's a good age for a person to start? As soon as possible. <laughs> 
get through baby steps one, two, and three as fast as you can because I think it was Albert Einstein said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Uh -huh. um, you can have a little bit of money early on and end up with a lot of money later because uh -huh. of compound interest. Um, if you start later, you don't get the advantage of compound interest. Because see, let's say you invest it $2,000 a year. The way compound interest works is that $2,000 a year makes, let's say you invested at 10%. So that $2,000 a year makes $200 the following year. Uh -huh. And then that $2,000 makes another $200. But not just that, the $200 makes oh. $20 and then it compounds and grows and grows and grows. And so your money that you start with makes money and the money that you make money on makes money and it grows and grows and grows. And so the sooner you can start doing that, the faster it will grow. He goes through a, a scenario with huh. Ben and Arthur, brothers, okay? These guys are our brothers. And Ben decides at, at, at uh, 20 years old that he's gonna start investing um, $200 a month. And so for several years, Ben invests, um, for about 10 years, Ben invests two, two, about $2,000 a year. And he stops, just completely just stops. And Arthur decides, okay, at, when he's 30, he starts investing $2,000 a year. Now Arthur invests all the way till he's up to, up to 65. But uh -huh. because of compound interest, Ben ends up with almost twice as much money as Arthur did, even oh. though Arthur's put in a lot more money because he uh -huh. started early. So compound interest, eighth wonder of the world. So as early as you can start investing, start investing. But get through baby steps one, two, and three first so you have the money to invest. Huh. So it's really best to start with your, your first real job? Or is that what you're saying? Yes. If, if, so my desire is if I could teach people this stuff uh -huh. when they're young, as young as I can get them to listen and, you know, as long as, they, you know, when they're making income, uh -huh. I could make them millionaires by the time they're older. Uh -huh. All they have to do is learn this, that if they start young and they start hard and they hit it really hard, they can be very, very, very wealthy and retire early. And, you know, this is this is actually becoming a little bit of a trend now. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, and people are living on less than they make. A lot of people are, there's a lot of younger people that are living on half of what they make. Well, because they're, they're living with their parents. Some. 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 I pray that my kids aren't like that. I think the ones that <laughs> are not living with their parents <laughs> uh, are making good financial decisions. Uh -huh. um, and and what's happening is they're taking that other investing it, and they're retiring even younger. They're uh -huh. retiring in their 40s. What are they Be doing? Because they're investing half of their income. So the key, I mean, the key to this is it, it, the more wealthy you want to be, the less you spend. Uh -huh. Your job, your job is your source of income, and you have this source of income, and then you just you invest whatever you can invest, and as early as you can invest it. Wow. Ooh. So we need to take a break because I just cannot believe that I'm just now learning what a mutual fund is, and I'm serious. I did not know what it was, and we're gonna come right back, okay? Because I got some more questions for you. All right. I am serious. So you can't save money? That's easy as pie. Drink from the tap. A $3 bottle of water a day times 10 years times 6% interest is over 14,000 clams. Small changes today, big bucks tomorrow. Feedthepig.org. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Welcome back to Bed. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. Believe it or not, I am learning something today from Josh. Good. And just like I was telling him during the break, I really and truly did not know what a mutual fund was. I just thought it was money you put and it just happens. But it does more than just, just happen. But before we went on break, we talked about how soon a person should start. And you said as early as possible mm -hmm. and try not to take the money out. That's a big secret too, right? Yeah, I mean, 
So a lot of people think that borrowing from their 401k is a great idea because uh -huh. they're paying themselves back the interest. But what you're actually doing is you're unplugging your mutual fund that's growing. Uh -huh. You're taking the money out of a mutual fund and it's not growing anymore. And so now you're paying yourself 3% rather than mutual fund. So leave your money plugged in. You need that compound interest. You need the growth. Um, so you wanted to do that. Okay, what is the most important thing a young person needs to understand about retirement funds? And like you said, you, you're hurting yourself when you pull it out. Mm -hmm. But what's another important thing that they should know about it? Uh, well, again, start early mm -hmm. um, is, is probably the most important thing I can stress mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Um, it's, not, it's not a short term thing. So you want, if you have a mutual fund, um, you want it to be at least in there for five years. If you're planning on taking it out before five years, uh -huh. um, there's a good chance it, you know, it's not going to be worth as much because the market goes up and down. And this is true. a lot of people will look at investments and they'll be like, oh no, it's going down and I'm going to pull out. But the people that win are the people that stay on the roller coaster. The people that jump off roller coasters die. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, so, and so if it's going up and down, just wait it out in the long term and it'll, it will all work itself out over the long haul. So like if you have your money in these investment funds and it starts to go down and it's time for you to retire, do you continue to work with hopes that it's going to come back up? Hopefully by that time the little the little fluctuations aren't going to bother you. Hopefully you're diversified enough uh -huh. and then you have uh, a lot of money all over the place. Now we talk about putting 15% into mutual funds. Uh -huh. uh, there's four types of mutual funds that uh, we recommend that you start with. Ah. Um, one is growth stock mutual funds. I talked about those. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. growth and income funds, um, international funds. So now you got money out overseas, so you're not just investing in you know uh -huh. you're a foreign exchange student. Um, <laughs> and uh, growth cap funds. Uh -huh. And so diversify your funds across several areas, uh -huh. so that we ha so so it's all over the place. Huh. Um, There's a lot of people that know very little about investing in monies, what to do with it. What do you suggest they do if they need to find somebody to help them with this? So Dave Ramsey on his site has partners that he works with that follow mm -hmm. his plan and that, that, uh, that he's vetted out mm -hmm, to make mm -hmm. sure that they know his plan so, they're, so that the people that go there are following, um, that, that are working this plan don't end up not end up working this plan. Uh -huh. So, so I would suggest going to his website and finding those people. Uh, he has in, um, investment brokers. He has real estate agents, etc. So, ah. um, that he works with that teach the same way he does. And like you said earlier, too, really talk to that person before you stick their money with them, your money with them, because yep. you want to know that they know what they are doing. Yep. So what are you doing yourself as far as planning for retirement? If you don't mind me asking. That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> um, so, so I do have, I work for the city. Uh -huh. I do have a retirement plan there. Mm -hmm. um, so, but what Dave Ramsey suggests at the 15%, so, we're gonna, so what we're gonna do um, is we are, a lot of companies match your 401k. They'll do uh -huh. like a 3% match. Some of them do up to a six. You really don't see more than 6% match typically. Um, so, so let's take a couple that makes a um, hundred thousand dollars a year. That's fifteen thousand. Or that's fifteen thousand dollars a year that they're going to be investing. Mm -hmm. So, so what we do is we 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 go up to the match. So let's say this couple huh. that have a, a three percent match. Okay. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to invest up to three percent because because if they're matching, that's a hundred percent gain for you. Right. So you're going to match that four hundred one k. If they do a matching, you'll you'll invest into the match. Then we have is a Roth IRA, and I didn't really talk about Roth IRAs, but Roth IRAs are great um, because it's it's tax free. Uh huh. Um, you pay after tax dollars into it, and then you can pull out up until your retirement anything that you've put into it. Huh. And all your gains are tax free once you retire. So uh, as of today, each working individual can put up to. Fifty-five hundred dollars. Uh -huh. The only exception to that is um, a non-working spouse, like a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad, can can also put fifty-five hundred dollars a year into it. So what you want to do is go up to that match, and then you want to invest the rest um, up to up to fifty-five hundred dollars or uh -huh. um, 
eleven thousand dollars if you're married, and then anything left over up to that fifteen percent, you could bring it back into your four hundred one k. Okay. And so, what happens when you retire early if you have these monies set aside? Can you take them out if you were to retire at forty? Can you take that money out then, or do you have to wait until you're a certain age? That's the great thing about a Roth IRA, because now you've been investing for a long time. Uh huh. And you've been investing 15%, maybe you've been investing 10% into your Roth IRA. Uh huh. Uh -huh. You can actually start withdrawing from your Roth IRA all the money that you put in, because it's, it was already, you've already t paid taxes on it. So you can pull it out tax free. At any age? At any age. Not the growth. But what you've put into it, uh -huh. because it's post-tax dollars you've put into their Roth IRA, the government's not going to tax you again on it. Now, once, once you get to 65, then you can start pulling out the gains that you've made on it tax-free. I tax -free. see. I see. I see. I see. You know, you have really educated me today on retirement. Thank you so much for coming. Do Thank you me. have any lasting words for my viewers before we close? Well, like I said before, have a plan. <laughs> that is the key to all this. Have a plan. I'll say it again, just like I said last time. Uh -huh. if you aim at nothing. You will hit it every time. Right. Um, so have a plan. Know that this stuff works, but you have to stick to the plan. Uh -huh. You got to make a budget. You got to make a budget so that you know where to put your money for mm -hmm. retirement. And um, and every, anybody can do this. Everybody can do this. You just it you can stay be done. focused. Well, thank you again, Josh, for coming on my show. You really shared some valuable information this time. Again, you've got to come back. I will. So we can talk more about money yeah. and maybe some other stuff. Good. Okay? Yep. And I want to thank each and every one of you for watching my show, A Better You, here on Public Access 21, every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Thank you so much. I don't think I.